Ely is a town of about 4,000 near the eastern border of the state that owes much of its history to the railroad. We're getting a close-up look at that history at the Nevada Northern Railway Museum. Mark Bassett is the museum's executive director. Mark, thanks so much for meeting us. Hello, Chris. Hey, Mark. Hello, Dave. Thanks for having Welcome us. Welcome to the Nevada Northern Railway National Historic Landmark right here in Ely, Nevada. Thanks, it's beautiful. This building is pretty striking by itself. Does this go all the way back to the beginning in 1906? Actually, it comes in 1907. Railroad comes to town in September of 06, and starting right afterwards, they start building this building. This is the machine shop for the repair of the locomotives, and next door is the engine house where the locomotives were stored. It looks like you still have a lot going on in there. We still have a lot going on. It's still doing today what its designers and builders intended over a century ago. We're still repairing and maintaining the original locomotives right here. The number one question we're asked is, where's the museum? Because <laughs> people come to a museum expecting one building. Right. Here we have 70 buildings and structures. Right. It's all the museum. <laughs> it is all the museum. and. What makes this a national historic landmark, and that is the highest level of recognition the federal government can bestow on a historic property, is its completeness. And this is the last place like this in the United States. The reason it's so complete is that everything that was here in June of 1983, when the railroad closed, is still here. The workers had experienced temporary layoffs before, so they left here expecting to come back to work pretty quickly, but it never happened. The museum has not only the buildings, workshops, and equipment, but complete paperwork from all the way back to the early 1900s, including ledgers and blueprints laying out construction plans for the railroad and the town. This is Locomotive 93, and you can see there on its builder's plate, it was built and delivered here in January of 1909. Now this building is two years old, okay? At the time. At the time, correct. And this is what makes us a National Historic Landmark. This locomotive has been here now for over a century, and we're still maintaining it here in the original building, using the original tools and using the original techniques. How many locomotives do you maintain? We actually maintain four steam locomotives and about a dozen diesel locomotives. Wow. Yes, wow. Welcome to the engine house. This is locomotive number 40 and she is the queen. She was delivered here in July of 1910. And has been here ever since? And it's been here ever since. What makes this the queen? Well, <laughs> if you take a look at her drivers, they're 69 inches in diameter. She hauled the passenger trains and she carried four and a half million people to Ely. Wow. And the state of Nevada has symbols the state bird is the bluebird, state flower is the sagebrush, the state locomotive is Nevada Northern Railway 40. So oh, you're wow. actually meeting one of the state symbols. You are meeting one of the state <laughs> symbols, and if you come here on the weekend, you can ride behind a state oh, symbol. Oh, how much fun. Well, I thought you were one of the state symbols. <laughs> but all right, well, you know, maybe yeah, together. We yeah. can make, we'll call you a it's team. It's a gray, so. We'll call you a yeah. team. Well, I have to say, I'm, I'm ready for a ride. I'm excited. It's well, we can go for a ride if you'd like. Every time I step onto a train, I feel a sense of anticipation and nostalgia. It's like stepping directly into the past. We're heading to Steptoe Valley. This is the main line of the Northern Nevada Railway and was built way back in 1906. It was built for the copper mine at Ruth where they've been mining since 1905. During the heyday of the railroad, 60 York trains a day, 30 loads, 30 empties, and you had 32 passenger trains. And you have to go back a century ago 
If you're going to go anywhere, you have three choices. You can walk, you can take a horse conveyance, or you can take the train. Mark explains that the concept of time changed a lot once travel shifted from horseback and sailing ships to passenger trains. Time didn't mean anything to you. Every small town in America had a guy that came out, looked at the sun, and said, it's noon. <laughs> Everyone, okay, <laughs> that's fine. You know, you woke up when the sun came up, you went to bed when the sun went down. Well, all of a sudden you have the steam locomotive. It is not dependent on animal power or wind power. It can operate 24 seven. This changes everything. So how are you going to control two trains on opposing track? Can't use a radio, can't use a cell phone. The only thing we got is time and paper. So we could write out train orders. That's all well and great. The only small little fly in the ointment, there's 8,000 time zones in the United States. <laughs> At the time, back then. Yes, because every little town had, had its own guy, time. They had the guy, right? They had the guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so what happened is trains were going opposite one another. They had the wrong time. They come around the curve, right. boom bad for business. So the railroads got together and decided we're going to standardize time. The time zones we know today, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific, were the result. And now you know why conductors are always looking at their pocket watches. These are vital tools to help stay on time. We reach the McGill area and it's time to turn back. But you can't just turn a train around, so what do you do? Bring an engine to the back of the train and pull it from there. There are always events happening at the rail yard and many different varieties of tours. You can see what's coming up at nnry.com.